output in the form of a map of inundated area for the region is sent to the relief commissioners as to which are all the areas, uh, both the uh, uh, cities as well as the farmlands uh, that are inundated with water. And the duration of these inundation also is taken up uh, for agriculture areas to know its impact. So by we are also developing the protocols wherein quantitatively we can estimate the production loss for these uh, uh, natural disasters uh, like drought and flood and uh, flash floods in some of the regions. So likewise, uh, remote sensing also has such unique advantage like in uh, terms of uh, hailstorm damage assessment. So it's uh, uh, prior to the uh, hailstorm damage and post hailstorm damage, we acquire the satellite data products and uh, carry out the analysis as to how uh, the vegetation manifestation is uh, affected in terms of its uh, condition, which is uh, shown either in the form of a vegetation index or a surface reflectance. And that is used uh, to uh, quantify the areas affected, uh, including with uh, high resolution data, the field uh, parcels that are uh, likely to be affected by these uh, hailstorm incidents. So, Crop production estimation, again, it started uh, f from uh, what we call as a, a more of a qualitative estimate uh, initially, and uh, which further we uh, have uh, graduated to uh, estimate this crop production uh, by specializing the crop simulation models, uh, uh, incorporating the remote sensing data products into these models, which uh, we have right now not released, but we are working on uh, several crops, and. Uh, one of the crops that are now we are operationally trying to use is for rice, followed by uh, maize, which we'll release uh, very soon. Then this uh, uh, further, we will uh, add sugarcane in the subsequent years, uh, wherein we will quantify the sugarcane production um, uh, uh, spatially. So here, our uh, uh, basic idea is, uh, initially we started production, uh, I'll tell you the subsequent slides in detail, uh, by using uh, just the uh, vegetation index. And uh, vegetation index alone uh, need not quantify the entire dynamics. So we later started uh, including the agromet parameters, which we call spectro agromet models. And then again, uh, we improvised on this. So we improved the uh, assessment methods. Uh, so from normal regression to up to uh, machine learning uh, uh, algorithms uh, added into that. So those details will be said to you later. So before uh, telling you in detail to the persons who are new to remote sensing, just wanted to tell uh, you by this uh, very uh, known uh, graph that how these uh, spectral response uh, of uh, vegetation would be when we see uh, through our uh, satellite data uh, products. So basically, this is a spectral response curve from uh, uh, 400 to 2500 nanometers as to where these peaks and uh, dips are there. Like for example, we have uh, uh, the chlorophyll absorption bands uh, uh, somewhere around 500 to 600, uh, and the six, centered around 500 and uh, 600 plus nanometers. We have a peak reflectance curve at a near infrared region. Then uh, later we have the moisture absorption bands. So at the near infrared region, the peak reflectance is also due to the uh, canopy architecture, the intercellular, uh, uh, then uh, a, a, a intercellular uh, water content as well as the space that is there. And further, when we move ahead, so these uh, spectral response also would be uh, characteristics of water absorption, uh, then the presence of uh, uh, nitrogen or chloro. Uh, so such components also. So those details I'll be briefing when I touch about touch upon how uh, hyperspectral data can also be used for uh, various applications. So this is one of the uh, uh, broad methodology here, what I have showcased is used it, uh, at our uh, Mahalanobis National Crop Forecast Center. So wherein uh, we are uh, giving the forecast, production forecast, so like uh, pre-sowing, then early season, mid-season, and then and the revised final forecast. So for which in the uh, pre-sowing forecast, uh, we use the econometric methods. 
then uh, we include agrometeorological components in the early sowing uh, uh, forecast, and then the field observations by uh, uh, the uh, terms of ground truth, and so such uh, information is included along with the uh, satellite data uh, reflectance uh, components into this for uh, mid-season forecast and uh, uh, the temporal uh, remote sensing data and fields uh, observations together uh, for uh, arriving at the uh, final uh, forecast. So in this, in this way, we are integrating uh, the uh, crop production forecast by incorporating space-based observations, agrometeorology, and uh, land-related observations. So this, I just wanted to brief you before I take you to the actual sugarcane uh, crop monitoring. So uh, friends here, uh, I would like to say that there are more than 100 papers or, or many more than that, uh, which have dealt uh, using uh, geospatial uh, technology for sugarcane crop monitoring, which is both uh, crop acreage estimation, then crop, crop condition, then crop production forecast, and all such things. So basically, when we uh, see geospatially, we can uh, initiate this uh, by sh sugarcane uh, crop mapping. Then we can also uh, study its uh, condition and uh, how this sugarcane crop condition performance was there vis-a-vis -vis the previous uh, normal seasons, so the anomaly uh, kind of uh, uh, studies. Then health monitoring of the uh, sugarcane crop. And finally, yield estimations. So here what I would like to do is I would just like to uh, introduce you to some of the techniques which have been carried out globally uh, for uh, all this and uh, how uh, we are uh, uh, going ahead uh, uh, for uh, operational uh, monitor, uh, mapping and uh, uh, production estimation of this. So as my earlier speaker already introduced you in brief and in detail uh, very systematically on the uh, stages of uh, uh, the sugarcane uh, uh, crop. So these are very essential for uh, we for remote sensing also because remote sensing is just a tool. Uh, so to any domain expert uh, who can use that uh, tool uh, and uh, uh, arrive at quantitative outputs in his uh, domain. So I would like to I'll move ahead with this. So basically, when we talk about sugarcane mapping. So how do we distinguish that particular crop from other crops? So sugarcane is a long duration crop. So in a special region, say suppose a tehsil, taluk, uh, then a district or a state, we have large number of crops. So each crop uh, at a, a specific stage has its own spectral properties, so which are sensed by the satellite remote sensing data products. So and they are of different resolution. So the resolution depends on the objective of our interest. Say, suppose I want uh, uh, to estimate the crop area of, at uh, entire state level. So I, at that time, I need not uh, uh, go for a very high resolution data. So for me, a, a moderate resolution like 10 meters or 20 meters would be good enough. So I would be uh, using such particular data sets when I uh, <laughs> try to uh, map that particular uh, data uh, for that entire region. Then likewise, if I want to study about the area uh, dynamics of a Hobli or a Gram Panchayat or a Tahsil, so therein I require a very high resolution data where, uh, wherein parcel level uh, variability uh, should be captured and uh, such information uh, would be required uh, both uh, for uh, administrative purposes as well as uh, helping the farmer's uh, requirements. So here, what I mean to tell you is, so when we have these satellite data sets at uh, dif different intervals, time periods, so uh, at, uh, we know the sugarcane growth in, in the initial phases, uh, we have a lot of soil background uh, reflectance captured in the image and of, at that particular resolution cell. Then further as and when the crop grows, so the soil background would get removed and uh, it, more of manifestation of crop alone will come. And likewise, when we have it uh, nowadays, unlike the earlier periods, uh, even the moderate resolution data sets are available uh, at least uh, once in a fortnight. And uh, we've, that we considered, so for the entire crop cycle, we have huge data sets that are available to uh, effectively uh, map a particular crop, especially a long duration crop like sugarcane. However, uh, 
in Kharif season, we do have clouds. And for that, also, there is an answer. So we are uh, utilizing microwave data sets uh, to, to identify the crop. So basically, when uh, we want to identify a crop, we would identify a specific window wherein this particular crop can be easily distinguished uh, to, from the other crop. And if we, when we have uh, the number of uh, satellite dates, uh, well, I mean the temporal data sets, is, if it is a limitation. Or else, if uh, with the uh, uh, temporal data availability, then uh, this uh, also is not an issue. But most important component is we should have ground truth. So ground truth is extremely essential so for uh, identifying a particular crop. So what we do is we collect representative ground truths, like 5% uh, of the uh, areas uh, uh, we visit and collect the ground truth, not just for sugarcane crop, but sugarcane crop, if it is a target crop, I will, I will also I take the equal proportion of such ground truths for the other competing crops grown in that particular region, so which are uh, representative of that particular resolution uh, of that satellite data. So then once these ground truths are brought, the spectral signatures are studied, the spectral separabilities are studied, and they are overlaid on the image and uh, in a machine learning algorithm. So you can see the uh, ground truths that are overlaid onto this uh, imagery. So this imagery is shown here as a uh, false color composite. That means NIR region, which reflects more for, for, from the vegetation, is shown is given a, a red color here. So therefore, all the vegetation appears to be red. And uh, you also can see the bottom, we some uh, four pictures are there of the same false color composite. So you can see that uh, uh, this especially ground truth is taken when the sugarcane is mature. So when sugarcane is mature, apart from the green leaves that are there on the top, you also have a reflectance uh, coming up from the uh, stem portion. So therefore, it is lightish pink. Uh, in tone compared to the other vegetation that are more bright uh, and uh, red in tone. Uh, so these inputs are uh, incorporated and uh, uh, this is one of the uh, methodologies we adopt for uh, uh, area estimation. So here uh, I've shown you an example for wheat and mustard. So likewise similar uh, uh, method is adopted for uh, many other crops. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. So here, uh, once we have these temporal data sets, ground truths are uh, collected, we overlay this, and uh, in an appropriate uh, uh, machine learning algorithm, we execute uh, uh, this and classify the crops. And later, we also have uh, around 20% of this ground truth uh, uh, available with us, with which we use it for validation. And if the validations are uh, results are not accurate, we will uh, again uh, uh, rerun this uh, model with more number of ground truths and uh, improve this accuracy. And uh, uh, I'm happy to say that uh, for major dominant agriculture crops grown here in India, so we are able to um, uh, get uh, an accuracy of 80% and beyond. So this is an example of the adjacent district, uh, which is there in Karnataka, Gulbarga, where sugarcane and uh, tour crop is dominant. So uh, we have uh, uh, shown you this. So likewise, this, uh, say, suppose an example of uh, output of a classified uh, image for crops that are grown in that region using a random forest algorithm. So likewise, we have many other algorithms, uh, classification algorithms uh, that are there. And each algorithm has its own advantages and disadvantages. We should know those uh, things before we implement that particular algorithm uh, for uh, identifying that particular crop. Because uh, it, it is not just for that particular crop. It also depends on the data availability with us. Uh, the ground truths that are available with us. So based on that, we have to judge which particular algorithm suits well. And many literatures are available uh, for what are the specific advantages and uh, limitations of these machine learning algorithms. So I would like to show you one more method which was carried out uh, in one of our, uh, uh, by one of our colleagues. So they have also uh, see both uh, combined this machine learning algorithm and uh, this unsupervised uh, algorithm also, and together to, to come out with a, a classified output of agriculture uh, sugarcane crop. So likewise, when we see the literature globally, 
there are several sensors that are available. There are several algorithms that are available. Uh, sorry, my slides might not be so much visible to you. But uh, here I have listed down some of the uh, algorithms that they have used. And you can also see the accuracy percentage for each of this. And uh, few of them have been recently been used. Maybe, therefore, the uh, variations in the accuracies are varying here. And uh, you can also see uh, the spatial resolution. As and when the spatial resolution increases, the overall accuracy also has increased. And uh, at the same time, uh, improved algorithms have also improved the overall accuracy in identifying that particular crop. So this is uh, in brief about uh, the crop area estimation. So when we go about monitoring of crops, so I'll show you one of our portals here. Uh, I'll show you one of our portals here as to uh, how we have processed the uh, satellite data and kept it on a web page, wherein you, your own ground truth, you can uh, type it there and uh, you can observe these uh, profiles, uh, previous year's profile, I profile in the terms of vegetation index. Uh, so as to how it was in the previous year, how it is in this year. So basically, uh, this reflectance characteristics, you know, they are a linear combination of uh, spectral reflectance of plant material uh, and the underlying soil. So these observations, you know, are characteristically determined by the quality of the optical data. Why I'm telling you this point is, these satellite data sets, you know, they are, take the, they are captured above the surface of our atmosphere, maybe around 300 kilometers or 400 or 500 kilometers above the Earth's surface. So these data sets have to be corrected first and uh, uh, brought uh, in the ap apparent uh, uh, like ground reflectance, similar to ground reflectance, wherein in between you will have the atmosphere. So you have to correct these uh, data sets for atmospheric effects and all. So earlier, Everyone used to do it on their own, but now we have analysis-ready data. So that analysis-ready data you can directly use uh, for uh, classification or any other uh, uh, works of our interest. So here I'll be showing you now the portal from where uh, uh, you can uh, visualize this. And I'll also take you to our uh, uh, drought portal so which is called Krishi DSS recently launched. So there also I can show you. Ah, yeah, okay, One more. Ah, there it is. Okay. Dusra. So this uh, application was shown earlier by my, our uh, ISRO's main page. So this is, uh, the same link is also available at NRSC uh, web page called bhunidhi.nrsc.gov.in which was shown to you earlier. So likewise, uh, we ha I'm taking you to uh, decision support uh, tool for drought assessment. So earlier I was telling that these data sets are there from which we can estimate drought. Now we have automated all this and brought it into a one portal so that it becomes easier for all uh, to use and uh, they can download their uh, own data sets and uh, uh, use it for their purpose. So initially now here uh, in two formats it is there. At the Tehsil level, district level, you have all the parameters for agriculture drought assessment uh, as per the drought manual uh, is available in this portal. At the same time, you can also browse uh, and see per pixel uh, variability uh, in the another visualization, uh, other visualizer uh, which I'll take you. So once even when I click this enter site, so we will get uh, to know the information for all the states of India. Uh, say if I want to, uh, this is for the current uh, season, January 24, uh, and likewise for the previous. Uh, Kharif season if I want. So once I click this, so for all the drought related parameters, uh, like for example, right now it is shown for cumulative rainfall. So I can have n all these parameters and uh, how the drought is triggered as per the manual, all those things are uh, automated here. Like for example, uh, if it, rainfall deviation is there plus four weeks of dry spell. So those regions which are having such conditions would be highlighted here. 
and here you also have an opportunity to download them. Download this data as well as the images, maps, everything. So likewise, when I uh, move from rainfall and its derivatives uh, to uh, remote sensing based derivatives, so normalized difference vegetation index. So here also, okay, I'm showing you at district level. When I go to the HCL level, and you can also go to field analytics and uh, uh, see this uh, uh, data at uh, pixel level as well. You can see the NDVI deviation with respect to normal year as to how much it is deviating. And that deviation, how it is gradually changing from the uh, sowing Kharif's, start of the Kharif season till end of the season, and uh, how drought is triggered. And uh, once you get to know that these, these districts are affected, and uh, drought is, you cannot declare drought unless you go to field uh, for 10% of these sites and verify these sites to have at least 50% reduction for these 10% sites. And then only you can, uh, uh, I mean, uh, declare that particular uh, unit as drought affected and send it uh, to the central government for uh, further processing. So likewise, you also have uh, root zone soil moisture data products available, basically a bookkeeping based method. We also have satellite derived and model derived uh, root zone soil moisture also, but at a coarser level. So therefore, we have not put it here. So we have precipitation in two ways, both IMD uh, based uh, uh, precipitation and also uh, integrated with our uh, uh, satellite uh, data, you know, uh, data products like inside data products called quantitative precipitation estimates. So these two products are also there here. And for every single week, you can have these updates. So fr uh, from June to uh, the end of Kharif season. And likewise, for uh, all other seasons uh, available. And uh, the, as per the drought manual, for Kharif, uh, we are taking these uh, rainfall and its derived parameters and vegetation index and uh, like that. But for uh, Rabi, we are also taking the uh, other parameters also, so which are listed in this website. And uh, due to lack of time, I will not go full deeper into this. And f moving on to the another portal within this, uh, from our uh, space application center, Ahmedabad. Uh, you can see the uh, satellite data in terms of its natural color composite. So here also, if I want to know, for example, you have latitude, longitude, you can type in your latitude, longitude here in this column, click on go. It will uh, select that particular area and give you the statistics. For example, if I click here directly, say suppose some particular portion. So it generates the statistics. Uh, of that particular region in terms of uh, uh, right now NDVI is selected, so therefore NDVI it is coming. So if we have several such parameters and uh, we can uh, select that, analyze them online, take it onto our uh, 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 notes and then further uh, carry out uh, our analysis. So this is another one. Similar uh, In similar lines, we have here if you go to uh, downloads here, we have certain softwares that are available uh, that uh, one can uh, download for both uh, optical data analysis as well as uh, uh, hyperspectral data analysis. We also have ISRO NASA's uh, uh, program uh, wherein we have flown uh, uh, hyperspectral uh, data airborne at uh, four meters uh, resolution for selected test sites. So those data sets are also available here for uh, students and researchers and uh, industries to uh, make out as to how these uh, uh, data sets behave with a varied, uh, uh, like if you want to study on soil dynamics or agriculture crop dynamics or its nutrients or such or retrieve certain bi uh, biophysical parameters that are that are going as an input to your uh, crop model for production estimation. All such things can be studied and developed uh, using these things. So I just wanted to thought this is an opportunity also for me uh, to showcase as to some of the data sets uh, if they are not aware so that uh, they can make use of this as well. So here, uh, this site within Bhunidhi, Bhunidhi Vista, you, apart from our Indian satellite data products, 
So we also have other free satellite data products like Sentinel-2 data sets that is there at 20 meter resolution um, optical data, then uh, Sentinel-1 microwave data. At, uh, so all these data sets also are here for Indian region downloaded and they can directly be uh, transferred onto our systems. So apart from this, one more uh, product uh, that we have is uh, from uh, Bhuvan, uh, like land use, land cover, and such thematic data sets can be called as a WMS layer uh, in QGIS, and uh, you can carry on uh, that as an input data for your analysis. So I am done with this uh, portal-related uh, components. So I'll now show you. Yeah. OK, thank you. So I'll now show you some of the uh, inputs that go for uh, production estimations. So see, just I wanted to show you how this NDVI changes with uh, changes in the uh, crop figure. So generally what happens is NDVI is a difference between uh, red and NIR uh, bands. So uh, and it is normalized from 0 to 1. So in the initial phases when the crop is uh, uh, not fully grown, the reflectance is, uh, uh, say, suppose uh, for soils, it might be around somewhere around 0 0.2. Uh, so as and when the crop grows, so it gradually increases. Uh, and at peak vegetative state, it will be its, at its maximum. And further, uh, when the senescence starts, it comes, it comes down. It uh, gradually follows our crop's sigmoidal uh, uh, growth curve. So NDVI also has a disadvantage. It might get saturated at a peak uh, vegetative stage. So we also have certain other vegetation indices like uh, uh, enhanced vegetation index uh, and uh, indices that uh, uh, take care of the soil background like uh, SAVI and its uh, related uh, indices. So such indices, you know, are uh, used um, together uh, also in uh, production forecasting. And uh, certain researchers have got uh, very good results in uh, uh, estimating the sugarcane uh, production. So this is the example what I sh shown earlier. I'll skip them. So this is an example where uh, uh, for the flooded regions, you know, we make use of the uh, microwave data and identify the uh, flooded uh, cropped uh, areas. This one is another very important uh, uh, data which I thought of sharing with you all. Uh, it is on the actual Yaopo transpiration. Uh, pro it is a daily. Uh, it is available at daily time step interval uh, for entire India. So at uh, 550 meter resolution from 2019 till date, uh, freely download downloadable by calibrated uh, data sets. Uh, so this data sets uses SOMI NPP as one of the input. Uh, for uh, ca calculating the actual Yopo transpiration product uh, using modified Presley-Taylor method. Because uh, Penman Monteith, uh, we, ca we cannot use everywhere as uh, it is da data, uh, it requires more of data sets and uh, so much of data sets we cannot uh, uh, use it through our remote sensing uh, uh, and uh, derived uh, products. So this uh, data sets, you know, uh, we have uh, had a collab also we have a collaboration with uh, VSI also wherein uh, we have uh, installed a flux tower, which both we use uh, uh, for one of, for calibration of this uh, data and validation of these uh, Yopo transpiration products. Likewise, several such flux towers are uh, installed in India. And simultaneously, we also use it for um, our uh, carbon sequestration studies. So this data sets can be used uh, for uh, uh, production estimation as well, and uh, irrigation uh, uh, scheduling or uh, like our earlier speaker was telling, uh, uh, for uh, improving the uh, irrigation, uh, so through IWB, IW by CP ratios, he was telling. So, so there we can use this uh, component as well, spatially. So, so I would like to now just uh, uh, to break the monotony, to touch up on certain uh, important aspects uh, of uh, the hyperspectral data, unlike the. Uh, optical data, which I was talking about earlier, which has very few multispectral bands at uh, broader uh, uh, wavelengths, like four or five uh, data bits. So here, uh, which is shown in the right-hand side of the uh, 
graph here. You can see uh, the Modi and Landsat, only few bands are there here as compared to the hyperspectral data that has come from laboratory or from every uh, airborne uh, data sets. So what are these? So these are these uh, uh, spectral reflectance uh, bands that are available, these are contiguous bands at very, na uh, very narrow uh, bandwidths. So large number of such bands, so they are able to capture the subtle differences uh, in the spectral pro properties. So some of uh, the ground experiments we have con uh, used and uh, we have developed these signatures, we have incorporated them into the radiative transfer models and uh, we have used it to derive uh, leaf area uh, index uh, product uh, through satellite data so that we are using it into the uh, crop production uh, estimation. We are developing those methodologies. So see, in similar way, uh, uh, we have uh, used uh, these hyperspectral data products in retrieving the canopy nutrient content. So especially we tried in some of the uh, uh, horticulture plantation crops and uh, we are now also attempting that uh, in uh, uh, rice and sugarcane in uh, Mandya as one of the uh, selected regions. We could also successfully use this uh, technique in uh, detection of uh, uh, diseased uh, healthy uh, comparison between these two uh, data products. And finally, I'll just take, uh, with the permission of chairs, two minutes uh, on uh, showcasing some of the uh, methodologies that have been used for uh, production estimation, for special production estimation, and uh, with, uh, with uh, UP as uh, one of the study sites by some of our colleagues here. Uh, at uh, IRS Dehradun Nine Space Application Center. <coughs> Basically, this particular methodology makes use of temporal uh, vegetation uh, index uh, products and uh, I identifies the sugarcane crop and utilizes this vegetation index products uh, in arriving at uh, uh, the yield uh, by regression uh, methods. The second one, which I was earlier uh, discussing, so this uh, study utilizes uh, uh, the both agrometeorological parameters uh, along with this uh, spectral uh, inputs and uh, selects the best uh, model and uh, uh, arrives at uh, the um, uh, sugarcane yield. So prior to uh, obtaining sugarcane yield, already the sugarcane area would have been mapped and uh, for that sugarcane yield is uh, uh, estimated. And uh, the uh, Accurate error percentage also has been shown in the left hand side, so which is uh, with R as uh, 0.79. So likewise, further graduation into the production model estimates using geospatial approach using uh, the semi-physical models, which are basically uh, light use efficiency based models, wherein power uh, harvest index, uh, fractional power, are uh, some of the temporal data products on uh, f weekly or fortnightly intervals that are taken uh, along with the harvest index. So the uh, net primary productivity that is generated uh, is uh, compared with the actual harvest index obtained uh, to arrive at the uh, spatial yield. So further to this, uh, so machine learning models have also been used uh, in arriving at uh, the yield and they also have shown uh, promising results. There are several models, individual models alone have been used and also combination of those uh, uh, methods have been used and uh, MLR is used in arriving at the final, uh, predicting the final biomass. So this, uh, I just had a, a paper from which uh, uh, one of my students, uh, so we have taken a clipping, I have put it here, just to showcase that one of the advantage here uh, in, uh, compared to the previous is we also ha have tried to uh, include the differential sowing dates component also into this and uh, adopted the same uh, machine learning model in arriving at the yield production. Thank you for your kind information.